So what you'll need is you will need a DC power supply, which I have right here, a motor with an encoder attached, which is right here, uh, a step and direction input, which I'm using function generators. You'll likely be using a computer running CNC software or uh, embedded hardware like a microcontroller. Uh, the power supply I'm using is a lab power supply, variable uh, voltage and uh, current. Uh, you'll likely be using something like this, which is just a linear toroidal power supply. Uh, this one's 80 volt 20 amp, uh, but uh, the lab supply is uh, easier because it's adjustable voltage. Uh, so I have a large capacitor, 470 microfarad, attached across a DC positive and negative. That's really just so I can attach the leads, which are clips. I, it's not needed. Uh, I also have some one mega ohm resistors right here. Again, that's just so I can attach clips uh, from the function generators. Uh, you'll likely be wiring straight into the terminal. I, so, first thing we do is we turn on power and just verify that any LEDs come on. So we have red and green. That's good. Uh, when you power it on, uh, you'll have a red and a green LED uh, because it's uh, powering up in default mode. Uh, if it were to power up out of fault mode and your encoder was not there, your motor would just run away. So now that we have confirmed that the drive turns on uh, and uh, you get a red and green LED, we're going to want to put a jumper wire between into terminal 5. Uh, and this will be used in lieu of a momentary switch. Uh, and that'll go into terminal 7, and I'm just going to use it and just make contact to reset it. Uh, I have the uh, uh, the cover unscrewed, just so I can easily remove it. Uh, and so now we're going to power it on. And I'm going to make contact from 5 to 7. Momentary contact, just 3 to 5 seconds, and you see it goes to the in-position LED. So I'm going to turn the power off, and now we will connect our encoder. So the encoder we are using is a CUI AMT102-V. Uh, which are decent and relatively cheap encoders. Uh, so, we're going to put black into ground. Uh, your motor or encoder wire colors might vary, so uh, make sure you verify the wiring on your encoder before you connect it. But this one is going to be black for ground, red for 5 volts, it wants to go in there. White for channel A and brown for channel B. So let me put the white in. And finally, brown for channel B. Okay, so now what we'll do is we will turn power on and we're going to do the encoder test. So again on power up we have to reset the drive. Let's reset. Uh, we have the encoder connected. So what I'm going to do is if you look right here I'm just going to turn the motor shaft like this uh, just to verify that we're getting feedback from the encoder. And if you watch the drive while I turn the, uh, uh, the motor shaft uh, you'll see these LEDs change from in position which is green, to worn, which is yellow, and then fault, which is red. So as soon as I start moving it, it goes out of position, then it goes to worn, so it's beginning to fall behind, and then keep turning it and it falls. So it's doing what it's supposed to, and I turn it the other way, and it does nothing. It will not come out until I reset the drive, which is with the jumper wire. Uh, typically, you want to put a momentary switch between terminal 5 and terminal 7, uh, that is the recommended way of doing things. So let's turn power off, and now let's connect the motor. Uh, this is just to make sure that the motor is receiving power. So we'll put armature negative into terminal 3, and armature positive into terminal 4. And now we will apply power reset the drive. And now I'm going to try to turn the shaft by hand and it'll resist. And you see the green LED go out as I do that. It's biting me. 
to try to maintain position, which is a good sign. So we know we have a good motor, a good encoder, obviously a good power supply, uh, and we have a reset jumper that's doing what it's supposed to. So let's turn power off. I, I'm going to connect the step and direction signal now. I, so terminal 12 is common. Terminal 10 is the direction signal. And so you see these two uh, both connect to the same point at terminal 12, so it doesn't really matter which one I connect it to. And terminal 11 is step. If I can get it to clip on. Okay, so let's do that. Now we'll reset it. And there we go. So I have the step and direction set where it's just oscillating. I, that's just a, a, how I had it set. I have it oscillating five kilohertz on the step. And the direction I, I, is going to be moving at uh, one hertz per uh, direction change. Uh, so the drive is properly set up now. Uh, generally, when you receive your drive, its trim pots would be at 11 o'clock, which is, you can hear the motor, you can see it's a little bit rough. Uh, the way to quickly adjust it is going to be turn the I all the way down then turn the D, and then chase it with the P until the motor just sounds smoother and doesn't rock as much. And now, if you look how I have it running, and then we turn the I up, you can see the motor isn't rocking as much as it was. The best way to tune it is going to be with an oscilloscope, which I can cover in another video. I but right now, we have a 320X that is accepting step and direction inputs. It's moving the motor, uh, and it is maintaining position, uh, and everything is looking good. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment, or send an email, or give us a phone call, uh, and we'd be happy to answer. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for more informative videos, tutorials, and more.